Welcome to A-Frame Lesson 3.1. In this video, we're going to introduce two new components, the camera and the cursor, which are going to allow us to interact with objects in our virtual world. So let's get to it. All right, so we have our basic virtual world. Uh, it has a plane, it has a sky, uh, and has a box. So we need to add two additional components uh, in order to start interacting with our world. And the first one is a camera. Now by default, uh, A-Frame will add a camera component uh, to your world, which is what allows you to kind of move around in the world uh, even without having introduced this. The next thing that we're going to need to add is what's called a cursor. And you'll see here in a second what the cursor does. All right, so this is our world without the new components being added. Let's run it again. And you'll notice now that there is a little dot uh, on the screen. That is what's called your cursor. That becomes the focus of what you want to interact with. Not necessarily the hand, but the dot. Where the dot is in the virtual world, that is what you're going to interact with. All right, so let's head on over to JavaScript, and let's see how we can use these new things to interact with the box. So on window load, we go ahead and uh, grab the box through its ID, my box. We need to add something to the box so that when we put our mouse over it, uh, we can interact with it. That is what's called an event listener. So we're going to add an event listener. And the one we're going to add is mouse enter. Now, if you're unfamiliar with event listeners, or you might have been introduced to event listeners in a slightly different way. You know, if you ever done an on click on a button on a text box, that is what's called an event listener. Now, usually when you did an event listener, you also needed something called an event handler, uh, a function to handle what should happen when that particular event happens. So right now, the computer is going to be listening for the for the user to have their mouse enter my box. Now we have to specify what to do. And we're going to do that using what's called an anonymous function. This is called an anonymous function because it doesn't have a name. You can't call this function. This function is simply going to be used as part of this event listener. So when this event happens, we will execute this code. Now just to prove to you that this does work, uh, let's simply do a console log of hello. It's going to run this, and I'll bring this up a little bit so we can see it. And there you go. So every time I put my mouse into the box, you can see here the word hello pops up. So again, hopefully this proves to you that the event listener is responding to our action. So every time I put the mouse into the box, it displays hello. Now that's not very interesting. We want to actually do something with the box. Now, you might recall from your experience in the video two series of A-Frame that we used the word this as part of a class uh, to identify that you know, this was part of the class. We could do something similar here uh, where the word this, let's check it out real quick. And I think for this one, I, I don't have to pop it open to a new tab. And let's go ahead and pull up the console. And I want you to see what pops up. Now, recall, I am now doing a console log of this. And what you see here is that the word this actually represents the box. And hopefully that seems intuitive. You know, uh, my box add event listener. So we're saying, okay, I want to work with this. Well, what is this? Well, it's my box. Now, the cool thing about doing, about using the word this is that now we can do set attribute. Remember, this now re represents this box, which is an A-frame A box. So let's do color blue. And let's run that as well. All right, so you notice that it turns blue. Now, the other thing you'll notice too is that if I take my mouse off, it doesn't change. Why? 
because the only interaction we've added was the ability to enter the box. We gotta do stuff so that maybe when we leave the box, when the mouse leaves the box. And for that, I already have this pre-canned, so I'm gonna <laughs> simply copy and paste instead of having you sit there and watch me type. All right, so uh, let's review a little bit of the code that I've uh, added here. And I'm also gonna comment out this line, uh, which will allow us to use this, uh, this little browser. Let's get, give ourselves a little more space. Okay, so we have a mouse leave. So when the mouse leaves the box, it's gonna turn the color to cyan. When I press down on the mouse, it's gonna change it white. And when I release the mouse button, it's gonna change it to green. So let me change this up right here. All right, so my mouse goes in. It comes blue, mouse leaves, becomes cyan. That's the second event listener. Uh, I'm gonna go in, I'm in there, and now I'm gonna release the button, which makes it green, and I'm gonna press down on the button, which makes it white. So we got all kinds of different interactions that are happening here. So I'm leaving, turns green, go in, out. So, and, and these are just a few of the event listeners that you can have in your virtual world. But I'll say these are the, very, the most common ones. Now you might notice that we're getting a, a message down here um, and it probably looks a little more uh, ominous <laughs> in this screen. You know, for performance, please uh, refine Raycaster objects when using Raycaster and component objects. So. You know, right now we just have a box, but once your world gets filled with a lot of things, uh, you're gonna wanna try to improve on your performance as much as possible. So now the cool thing about this warning is that it actually gives you an example of what to do. So I'm gonna grab this right here, and I'm gonna add it to my camera. And what this is saying is that, uh, let me double check, I'm pretty sure it's the camera. Might be the cursor. <laughs> Actually, uh, take a quick look. I think it's the cursor. Actually, look, did it tell us the cursor? Yeah, it says the cursor. All right, I'm <laughs> very good. Uh, this is a live recording. All right, so uh, what we've done here is we've set Raycaster objects data raycastable. Again, right now this might not mean much to you, but when I run it again, and I'm going to bring the code up. Notice the box doesn't interact anymore. Uh, you might think, oh, we broke our code. No, what we've done is that the virtual world will only interact with things that have this as an attribute. So I'm gonna put this over here on the box. And then let's run it again. And there you go. So notice now the box is, uh, we can interact with it. Now, honestly, this could have been anything. This could have been uh, cool. <laughs> it just needed something uh, to be able to identify, you know, which objects it can interact with. So, again, we could do it like this. Uh, again, there's many different ways of specifying which objects uh, you can interact with. So, for instance, if you just wanted to interact with the spheres, there's a way of doing that as well. Uh, but this will improve your performance, and when you have a lot of things in your world, you're going to want to do that. All right, so let's go back to our presentation, and let's review what we've done. So in this video, uh, we introduced two new components, the camera and the cursor, and we saw how through the use of event, uh, add event listeners, we were able to respond to different actions that the user might do with our objects in the world. We explored the word this as a, as a way of being able to access the component that the person interacted with. And at that point, really, honestly, you can do everything you've done before in terms of set attributes um, and, you know, modify, move, uh, and really, really enrich your world, allowing the person to interact with those components. So hopefully you're excited to be able to, you know, move things in your world and enjoy it.